Hi, last time I coded this reveal effect with no image duplication and I mentioned in that video I don't really think this approach where we have the image as a background layer along with a gradient overlay is really the best one as we need Houdini to animate the gradient and that limits support and we also don't have real image elements anymore. We can make it all accessible with roll image and aria label but it's still not the same for me as I can't just right click an image and get the option to download it or open it in a new tab or copy it or copy its URL, all that good stuff. So today I'll be showing you a different solution that uses real image elements and uses each and every one of them a single time. So no image duplication. We already have uh, this um, array where we have the images. So we're also going to have some info about uh, the overlay layer. So um, layer. But this is just going to be empty for now. Let's uh, maximize it and get the length of the array. So length, then we're going to have a loop. So for i going from zero all the way up to n, increment this i at every step. And we're going to have a figure and within it an image element. And um, we're going to get the current item, which is going to be the one at index i. So here we're going to have Okay, so we have the images. They should show up now. Okay, now on the body and uh, on the figure elements, we're going to have display grid and we're also going to set margin zero. Okay, now um, on our image elements, but first up uh, on the body, we'll be setting an edge length and this is going to be something like 13 M's. Okay, now we'll be setting that for uh, the images, that edge length. And here we'll be setting a grid template. Okay, and um, I think we can do grid template columns. Maybe just Okay, um, repeat. Okay, and uh, here we're going uh, to have... Yeah, I think we can just do columns. I think it's more compact this way. Okay, then we're also going to have a grid gap. Uh, and this is going to be a spacing value, which we'll be setting right here. Let's say it's going to be half an M. Now let's also set a uh, place content center. Um, let's place it in the middle vertically as well. So that's going to be min height full viewport height. Okay, so now that we've done this, um, let's move on to the figure. And we're going to want to have um, overlays, so before and um, after content, otherwise they won't show up. And um, for these, as well as for the image, we want to set grid area to be the same at the intersection between the first row and first column, so they all overlap. Now here we'll be having a box shadow which is going to be inset uh, and zero offsets, zero blur, but for the spread we're going to have a dummy value at first and then we're going to have an HSL value the hue doesn't matter because we want a gray, so saturation zero if we want a gray, and 40%. Now, the thing is, uh, we want our image to be um, grayscaled and um, darkened, brighten brightness 40%. Okay, now if you've seen my tiny Twitter tips, uh, then you know we can emulate the grayscale filter 
uh, by having another gray layer underneath our image and using the luminosity blend mode. Now here we don't have background layers, we have uh, element layers or pseudo element layers, doesn't matter, same thing. So we're not going to use background blend mode, we're going to use mix blend mode, but it's the same concept. So we have the image on top and underneath it we have the gray layer and uh, we use the luminosity blend mode. Now to get that uh, brightness 40% uh, value, we need uh, to use the multiply blend mode. So we need to have a gray layer and the image layer and we multiply them. So what we'll be doing is we're going to have that um, we're going to have the before underneath so we're going to use uh, luminosity for that so mix blend mode luminosity so between the image and the before we're going to have luminosity so we get the grayscale effect and then between uh, the after and the image we're going to have multiply So we get uh, the darker image effect, okay? Now, next step is we're going to set box shadow, not box shadow, uh, border radius. Okay. Um, so it's going to be a radius vol volume and the default is going to be 50%. Then we're going to set a transform, which is first going to have a translation. So we're going to have an offset along the two axes, which is initially going to be zero, zero. Okay. Then we're going to have a rotation. So rotation around the third axis, zero degrees initially. Then we're going to have a scale. Uh, so we're going to have a scaling factor along the two axes, which is going to be, uh, and here we're going to have square root two times square root of two. Okay, so we're going to we're going to need compass for this. So import. So we can have the square root there. Okay. Now the thing is we're going to need overflow hidden here on the figure element. Okay. So now that we've done this, let's uh, start modifying all the stuff individually. So for the first one, we're going to need uh, to change the, uh, change the offset. So this is going to be at uh, minus 50% minus 50%, so we want it to be, so from there, from the center, it moves to uh, the top left corner. But of course we need uh, to pass that, so we're going to have a style array here. Um, and in a loop here, so for every property in uh, the layer component, We're going to uh, push to this array. So we're going to have the property. Oh, that's just been inside. And its value. Okay, so now in the style, we're just going to uh, join this. Okay, so you can see that has moved to that corner. So now what we'll be doing is um, paste this and here we're going to uh, skip these three and go there and to the last one and we're going to uh, paste it there. Now of course we're going to change, we're going to get rid of the minus in those situations. So you can see we have that corner that corner, that corner. Now we're going to want, for the even ones, we're going to want the radius to be zero. So we can do something like nth child
so that radius is a zero. Okay, now let's get back here for a little moment. Um, here we're going to uh, want to have that rotation 45 degrees, 45 sorry. Uh, we're going to want that scaling factor. Actually, we're going to want the same here as well. Uh, so we're going to want this uh, scaling factor to be square root of 2. And let's just uh, take the first uh, three decimals, okay? Now here, we're going to want the scaling factor to be 1. Okay, and uh, we're also going to want the scaling factor to be 1 here and here. Okay, so now that we've done a few basics here, I think we can uh, move on here. And we're not going to have 5Ms, we're going to have a calc. And this one is going to use half of it, and it's also going to multiply it with 1 minus a hover custom property. This is initially 0, but on hover, it becomes 1. And then we're going to have transition so let's see how that works so you can see that one works fine this one looks fine this one looks fine so it just leaves these two right here for which we want a bit of a different approach so let's say we're going to have something like this is going to be uh, a spread, right? Okay, and we're going to want, so let's see. This one, right? And also this one right here. So we're going to have uh, the spread is just going to make it a uh, full, and then this one is going to be a zero horizontally and vertically. We're going to have a calc, and this is going to be hover times one hundred percent. Okay, so now that we've done this, okay, it looks fine there. And uh, here at the top, we want to have times minus 100%. So now, okay, so now we have all those effects there. And um, we can switch to a few final tweaks. So for example, here, uh, we'll be setting an M value and this is going to be ceiling of square root of N, okay? And let's indent everything properly. So now we can just uh, get rid of uh, the magic number there. Okay. And we can make this responsive, so we're going to have, it's the minimum between this and calc minus, and here we're going to have m plus 1, so times that spacing, and then we're going to divide everything 
by m. Okay, so now it should scale and it does. Okay, so now that we've done this, uh, one more thing I want to show you. We don't get to that uh, space at the top, that padding. So let's add the padding there equal to that uh, spacing for the gaps, for the grid gap. Okay, so now we have it. But one other problem that I want to highlight, we have the scroll bar even though we don't need it. And that's because this padding gets added to this uh, height. Okay, so we need uh, to make sure it gets subtracted. So we're going to use box sizing border box. So now we don't have the scroll bar and everything is going to scale nicely. So uh, yeah, this is what I wanted to show you for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, if you like the work that I'm putting out for almost nine years now, please consider supporting it so I can continue. You can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on Patreon. The link is going to be in the description. Or you can get me something off my Amazon wishlist. Again, the links are going to be in the description. Or you can at least share this to show the world what can be done with very little CSS these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching and until next time. Bye!